Okay, so to make the slippers, we need a small 24 peg peg loom, my hook, and I'm using three strands of DK weight yarn. Um, what I've done already here, you can see, is I have a wrapped 17 and left seven unwrapped. And then I have just started knitting round using a basic U wrap. Um, you can do them with an A wrap, you can do them with any stitch really to be honest with you, but you want a pretty plain one. Um, and what I'm going to con do now is continue to knit just this section, so literally round and then back again using a basic U wrap stitch for 35 rows, okay? Okay, I've just finished my 25 rows in a straight U wrap, as you can see. Um, th sorry, 35 rows. Um, you might think this doesn't look very long for 35 rows compared to what you normally get, but when you're using the triple st strand DK, then it does keep it quite tight. So, you know, you will find yourself doing more rows than normally you would. Okay, what we're going to do now is, as I say, I've just... I've literally just finished the 35 and what I'm going to do now is I am going to e-wrap those seven pegs that were empty like that and then when I get to the other side push this down So I've e-wrapped those seven rows, those seven pegs, yeah, so now every single peg has got a stitch on it. And then when I get to this side, once I've e-wrapped them, sorry, I'm just going to keep going with my basic U stitches. And I'm going to do this for another 35 rows so 35 up until the point with just the 17 stitches and then once you've got those e-wrapped along you're going to be doing another 35 rows and that's it just keep going i'll see you in 35 rows time okay we've now done another 35 rows and this is what you end up with yeah okay so now we're at the part of finishing this off so the first thing that we're going to do is as you can see we've been as you know been working with three colors and um, i've actually been working with four because i've done this color variation so what i need to do now is remove one just to take some of the bulk out of the yarn as we do the toes and um, so i'm going to take out the one I've been using as a colour variant. You want to leave quite a long tail on it. You can, if you've been working with the same three colours all the way through, then just pick one. To be honest with you, it doesn't hugely matter. Um, if you've got one colour that's a particular feature or stands out, I would leave that one in. Um, and you'll see why, why as we go. So, the one I've cut, the yellow, we're just going to tuck out the way. I'm going to just push it down inside. There we go. Yeah, okay. Now, we need to start pulling the toes in. And the way we're going to do that is... Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to knit two stitches using your standard U wrap, or if you've been using A wrap, into it with your A wrap. But you're going to knit two and then you're going to move the first one across, okay? So. On. Knit two. 
Okay, so I've got my two stitches there. Let's see, you can see they're missing the yellow. There you go, those two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first one I knitted. I'm going to pull it so it's a little bit loose. And then I'm going to move it across to join the peg with the second stitch. Okay. This isn't as fiddly as I'm making it look. It's because I'm working around a camera, so you know. <laughs> there we go. So you end up with both stitches on one. Okay. And you continue around in this fashion. So. Knit one. I put the peg in first when I'm working with this many yarns at once just to make it a bit easier because obviously you've got a little bit more resistance on them. Knit two. Two there. And then I'm going to pull the first one loose and move it up and over. There we go. Now you just need to cut so you can see we're starting to get a pattern. So we have one empty, one with two on, one empty, one with two on. And you need to continue round until you've done this all the way. Okay, so now we've gone all the way around doing this. So you can see we have two stitches on every other stitch. Now what we're going to do, it's fairly simple. I'm going to push these down a bit to give me a little more working room. Is we're going to just go around and knit just these stitches, okay? So that we end up with one stitch on each of these instead of the two. Again, this is just about decreasing the bulk in the yarn. So I'm going to go from that one. And again, I'm just going to e wrap. And again, I'm making this look more difficult than it is because there is a camera between me and the knitting. There we go. Yep. Yeah. And again, put it in, pull the yarn around, and up, and up. And you're just going to continue that all the way around. Okay, so now we have one loop on every other stitch. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take these two threads, the two yarns that are still attached, and we're going to cut ourselves a decent length tail on them. Okay, there we go. Now, we need to pop these two threads. Stay, see we got, we've still got that third one just hanging out in there. Just leave that alone. I'm going to pop these two threads through a large darning needle. Is it a darning needle? It's a big plastic needle. Okay, let's just not panic about the terminology just yet. Okay, now all I'm going to do with this is a cast off stitch or a running cast off. There's a lot of different ways for it to draw cast off. Basically, this involves coming from my last stitch, there, going to the next one and pushing it down and through. Yep. And just working the way around all the stitches doing exactly that. There's nothing complicated in this. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to let the video run at this point because um, this doesn't take a huge amount of time.
while I'm going around here, what I will say is these slippers will fit sort of si shoe size, UK shoe size, four to about six. If you're doing sort of size seven or over, instead of doing 35 rows and then another 35 rows, what you probably want to do is 40 and then another 40. On the flip side, if you want to go take it the other way and you want to do a slightly smaller shoe size, sort of size three and under, and down to probably, you know, size one. Then I would just do 30 and 30. If you're going under that, this loom's probably too wide. Um, you can do diddy little kid sizes on flower looms, if you grab a flower loom. But they're really good for little babies' booties. You can do really quick using this method. Right, okay, so I've now been around all of them. It's gone through every single loop. Yeah. Okay. So now, now is the scary time, the time we take it off the loom. So I now have these three down in here. I'm just gonna flip them down there. And I'm just gonna go around and literally flick this off of the loom. What I'm also going to do at this point is turn this whole thing inside out. Okay. Now, all we do here is we get the two that we did our cast off with and we pull. At this point, you might want to pull this down over a hand just to give it a bit of a stretch. Yep. And then just pull the end back tight again. Okay. And that's what you get. What I'm going to do at this point is take the one we discarded. This little guy here. I'm going to pop him through my needle. And I'm just going to run them up the stitches, just picking up one or two, and get him up to join the other two yarns. Yeah? Just keep them a bit neat. Again, I'm just going to give this a little bit of a stretch. There we go. And then, I'm just going to tie these. couple of times to make sure I've got a good knot in them. And then trim my ends. There we go. Now, on to the other end. So I've got my little slip knot in here, so I'm just Pop that out. Now, what I'm going to do is pick one of these. Or oh, that one, doesn't matter which. And a very simple running stitch to join the two ends together. Now you're going to do is squish this flat because I know they roll. So you want to pull these guys out. Yeah. Make sure we get nice and even on both sides. Then we are literally going to pick up this edge in here and run it forward. And we do want to just catch the edges and back. You see, I'm just pushing those little edges out as I go.
then I'm actually just going to work this back up again just to make sure you've got it all stitched together nice and secure. I'm just pulling it down like this because I don't want this, you know, if you pull this really tight, this will squish up. You don't want to do that. So I'm just making sure that I still have that little bit of flexibility in it. And just turn it right up next to those. Those are the two yarns. And then exactly the same thing with the knotting. Just take them and tie a few good knots. And that people will recommend certain knots for this. If you want to use a different type of knot, go for it. It's, it's a knot. <laughs> as long as it ain't coming undone, I'm happy. Okay. And um, we're just going to neaten our ends. Whoop. And turn the right way in. And there we go. That is your funky little, very easy to make, slipper. And I've got its little buddy. Look. Hey. Slippers. And it's that easy. Those are slippers. That's how easy it is. Very quick and easy to do. I know I, I really, I always cut these short, but a lot of people like to leave them long and just work them in because it's neater. That's totally fine. I'm just a messy person. <laughs> and that's it. Slippers. Well done. Go for it. Make them with lots.